your favorite way to worship God? I love singing and dancing in the body that God's given me. I hope you do too, because that's what we're going to do now. Stand up and let's worship God together.
to Page Turner. We are continuing to travel together into different worlds in our imagination. It will be like jumping into the pages of our favorite books. Now, let's imagine that we are traveling back and forth between planet Earth and another planet called Little as Bigion, where <laughs> small things seem really, really big. All right, can anyone tell me what these four things are? Oh my, what is that? What do we think it is? It's gross, whatever it is. It kind of looks like a stone, but I don't know. I don't know. Okay. It's a little hairy. Next one. Ooh. Are those teeth? I think it might be teeth. It kind of looks like a shark, but a Mm. hairy shark. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know what that is. Okay, next one. Ooh. Hmm. I think I recognize this one. From where? What do you think? I think I saw him in a bug's life. Ooh, we think it's a bug. Okay, last one. Hmm. He needs braces. And a toothbrush. (laughs) I don't know. Okay. Well, now we are traveling back to our planet, and here is what they really were. So the first one was ants. Okay. Should have known that. Never looked an ant in the eye that close before. (laughs) All right. A cat. A cat. It okay. wasn't Make, a hairy shark. Makes sense. Mm. That totally makes sense. Yeah, okay, I next one. So. Uh, a, a praying, praying mantis. mantis. A bug's life. We knew that. Yes. A horse. A horse. Like he's, you know, he just needs someone to brush his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So the point of all this is perspective. And perspective is the way we see things. When we face bad things in life, or even when we hear the word evil, do we think that's an easy thing to beat? Probably not, right? We think big and scary and almost impossible to beat. But do you think God sees it all the same way? Nope. Now, have you ever been really scared to try something? Maybe it was new, or maybe it just seemed really scary, but you ended up doing it and it was maybe like a lot of fun um or it wasn't as bad as you thought it would be yeah i've experienced that before when i was in kindergarten so just three or four years old we had our first school dance and i had no idea what dancing was i don't think i'd ever danced before and i was so panicked and so scared but then once i started to do it i had fun with all my friends and now i love dancing that's good what about you mariah okay so i went to wonderland once and 
I really didn't want to go on a ride. I don't remember what it was called, but to me it seemed super scary. Uh, but my husband Jordan convinced me to go on, and it was actually a lot of fun. It was it was a really fun ride. So I'm glad that he convinced me to do that. Me too. <laughs> Today's story begins with our hero Jesus and some of Jesus' closest disciples coming down from a mountain. Now, why is that important? Because of what had happened up on the mountain. Now, you might remember the story of the time. When Jesus and his friends were on the mountain, and when they saw Jesus, or they saw Jesus' face and clothes and everything glow, right? And he became as bright as lightning in the sky. Does anyone remember that? We learned about it last week. I was there, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus' disciples had been sleeping, but they weren't anymore. They were wide awake. Then a cloud came down and surrounded Jesus, and God's, vo God's voice boomed from the cloud. So when they came down from that mountain, they were faced with what seemed like a huge problem. And it was. So let's see what happens next. It's time for today's Bible story. It comes from the book of Luke, chapter 9. Lots of people were coming to Jesus because he could do such amazing things. One day, a man came to Jesus with a very big problem. He told Jesus that something evil, that means really, really bad, was hurting his only son, and he didn't know what to do. He had gone to Jesus' friends, but they couldn't help. Jesus told the man to bring his son to him. As he came, everyone saw what the father was talking about. But evil, no matter how bad it seems, is no problem for Jesus. Jesus simply told the evil to go away and leave the man's son alone. And right away, the evil was gone and the boy was all better. Everyone was amazed. They thought evil was really powerful but now they knew God is more powerful than evil. Can you think of anything more powerful than God? Nope. God is greater than everything. But what about evil? Yep, evil too. God is greater than any evil thing. Let's go over our big idea for today. God is more powerful than evil. Hey, little chicken nuggets, it's me, Carl. Welcome back to another page turning TV. Greg, welcome to Grow TV. We're doing page turning. <laughs> welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV! Well, well, well. Hey there, kiddos. Can't tell you how excited I am for today's episode. I mean, last week I got told I couldn't leave my house for a whole month. Now, I'm not going to lie. At first, that scared me. I mean, what is a person going to do in a house for a whole month? That would drive them up the wall. I mean, I don't like cleaning. I'm not a good cook. And I mean, you can only nap so much, am I right? So I decided to read my Bible, and that was the greatest decision ever. Not only did I learn so much, but I had an incredible experience. You know how like you read or hear of a really good story and like your brain gets sucked into it and you feel like you're really there? Well, that really happened to me. I mean, I was taken into the world of the story. That was incredible. So today, I thought it'd be cool to try it again. See what happens. You think it's a good idea? Yeah. Me too, let's try it out. Hmm, what story should we pick today? Let's see, the plagues of Egypt. No, I'm scared of frogs. What about David and Goliath? No, that might be too intense for me. Ah, let's do a story from Jesus' ministry. Last week we talked about a story that happened at the beginning of his ministry. So why not look a little further into the future? All right, got it? Here we go. Whoa, this is incredible. Hey, I see a big crowd of people over there. I wonder what's happening. Oh, hey there, Carl. Grace, it's so good to see you. How are you? I'm great. I'm so glad to see you've made it back to another story. Right? After last week, I couldn't stay away. Are you seeing this? Oh yeah. Looks like you're in Luke chapter 9. Really? How'd you know? Well, for one, I can see your Bible still open. Oh yeah. Duh. <laughs> also, 
also, it looks like the mountains are just over there. And the big crowd with Jesus made me think that this probably happened right after the transfiguration, which is when Jesus was on the mountain with three of his disciples and they saw Moses and Elijah and even heard from God. Oh yeah, you're right. I do see Jesus and the disciples over there. What do you think they're up to? Oh, well, this is a magnificent story. It all starts with Jesus coming down from the mountain and then a father comes up to him. Jesus' is father like God? No, <laughs> this was a different father that lived nearby. You see, his son wasn't feeling well and he needed Jesus' help. Oh, okay, I got it. But wait. What? I was on the mountain with just Peter, James, and John, right? Right. So? Well, that means the rest of the disciples were down there with the crowd. Yeah. And? Well, couldn't the disciples have helped the Father out? Well, the Father said they had tried, but it didn't work. Oh, so Jesus was going to help them. He sure was. Now, his son was very sick, but not the normal kind of sick. Oh, did he have stinky feet? <laughs> Not quite. You see, just like the Holy Spirit lives in us and is a very good and loving spirit, well, this boy had a very bad and evil spirit in him. Oh no, that's awful! It really was. It would cause him to have seizures and yell. There was something really wrong. That sounds awful, but what did Jesus do? I can't see from here. Well, the boy was brought before Jesus and then the evil spirit inside of him made the boy have a seizure. Oh man, that's terrible. How about the boys scared and confused, huh? I know I would be. Me too. But that's when Jesus saved the day. Really? What did he do? Jesus walked up to the boy and rebuked the spirit. Wait, he what? Rebuked the spirit. What is a rebuke? Well, you know how your mima gets on you for scooping peanut butter for your PB&Js with your hand? <laughs> yeah, she gets really mad. I mean, it just makes sense to scoop it up with your hand. You don't have to use a knife and the leftovers are on your finger. So it's like a little reward. So it's a win-win. But she doesn't like when I do it and I always get in trouble for it. Okay, well, anyway, it's like that, but much more severe. Jesus firmly rebuked the evil spirit, telling it to leave the boy alone. And guess what? It worked? It worked. The boy felt much better and was returned to his father. Let's go! Way to go, Jesus! That's really cool. Makes you wonder, though. What's that? Well, if Jesus can do amazing things like stop evil, well, I wonder if I could do that, too. That's a good question. What do you think? I don't know, you know? I mean, I've done pretty cool things before, but doing what Jesus did? That seems kind of tough. I know what you mean. God created humans to do some really neat things. I mean, think about it. People can do backflips, make music, and we can even build rockets that go to the moon. But... But what? But only God has complete power over evil. That's why we pray and ask for Jesus, God's Son, to help us when we're faced with tough things. And when we are filled with the power He gives us, we can overcome evil too. Wow! That makes all this feel so much better. What feel better? All this, making friends, going to school, living life. I mean, if Jesus is God's son and he can overcome all the things like all the bad things in our life, I mean, what's stopping me from living the life that God wants me to? You know what, Carl? I think that's a great mindset. And I'm sure that's exactly what God wants us to do. Oh, hey, the crowd's moving. I wonder where they're off to next. Well, mm, whatever it is, it smells delicious. See you later, Grace. Well, hey there, bookworms. Did you all enjoy today's story? Because I know I did. And that's what brings us to our big idea for the day. It's God is more powerful than evil. So here's what we will do. Let's put our hands like this, make it look like a closed book. And when we open it like this, we will say the big idea out loud together, okay? Ready, one, two, three. God is more powerful than evil. <laughs> Great job, kids. Now next week, we have a super cool story and I think Carl is up for quite the adventure. And guess what? You're invited. I'll see you then, okay? Bye.
Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Pro TV. All right, everyone. We are going to go back to storybook land. Um, and I'm going to read you a story. So I need you to close your eyes. All right. Milo was reading his favorite book when suddenly he fell down a deep, dark hole in his bedroom floor and slid into another world called the land of what will be. When Milo first arrived, it seemed that this land was completely filled with darkness and evil. However, as he ventured toward the center of the land of what will be, he found that at its core was a radiant light of goodness. But the light was bound by an enchanted box. Milo opened the lid, then the light shot out in all directions and penetrated the darkness. It was clear to Milo that the darkness hated the light and tried to fight against it, but was helpless. The light just kept moving outward. It was also clear to Milo that once this kept going, someday there would only be light and goodness, and darkness would be gone forever. Milo awoke with a startle, his face planted in between the pages of the book. The land of what will be had only been a dream. But was it though? It felt so real. All right, open your eyes. How does Milo's story remind us of today's big idea? God is more powerful than evil. Well, in the story, we learned that light is more powerful than darkness. That's right. Now, we are memorizing a verse from the book of 2 Thessalonians, and it says this, But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. Let's check in with Sunny, because she is going to show us how to say this verse in sign language. 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 3. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Let's pray together before we head out. Dear God, we are so grateful that you are more powerful than evil. Help us not to feel defeated by all of the bad things going on around us and remind us that you are stronger than anything we may face. Amen. Make sure that you check out the church website because there are a bunch of fun activities that you can do with your friends and family at home. Check that out and Elena and I will see you next week. Bye.